class, innovation, telekinesis. He was a three-time NHL All-Star, Olympic gold medalist, Art Ross Trophy winner, and Hart Trophy recipient. Along with his brother, he dominated the cycle game, perfecting the no-look behind the back pass. The poise, the intelligence, the sedinery, he's left opponents and fans completely entranced in a hypnotic state for shifts at a time. Standing at 6 foot 2, 188 pounds, number 33, Hank Henrik Sedin. Behind the net to Daniel, coming up front, Henrik scores! Henrik from Daniel, Canucks win in four overtimes! Vancouver takes game one, five to four! Once upon a time in a land far, far away, there lived a couple of Swedish twins. No, not those Swedish twins, these ones, and they were unique from the very beginning. Born just six minutes apart on September 26, 1980 in Ornskulsvik, Sweden, the twins would be raised together, started playing hockey together, dominating on the same line together, and later winning trophies and championships together. The identical twins were, well, identical. They even played the same position, center, but it wasn't until they were 14 when it was decided they should be on the same line and brother Daniel was moved to the wing. Older brother Henrik became the playmaker, and Daniel was the sharpshooter, and they would hone their respective skills through their developmental years. In 1996, at the raw age of 16, the twins would play for Moto Hockey, where they would show instant chemistry as they went on to terrorize first the Junior League before moving on to the Swedish Elite League. Alright, if you made it this far, it's time to take part in some trivia. Which one of these players is Henrik Sedin? Keep watching, I'll be revealing the answer later in the video. Alright, let's continue. Flash forward to the year 2000. The Sedins had a pretty good tournament at the World Juniors, with them finishing 3rd and 5th in scoring amongst all players. But the fact he and his brother had scored most of their points against lesser teams, while struggling against powerhouses like Canada, and limping to a 4th place finish, scouts had decided they weren't worth it and looked to invest elsewhere. But there was one scout who was adamant they were special. Thomas Gradeen of the Vancouver Canucks, who was based in Sweden and had regularly witnessed their sorcery. He managed to convince general manager Brian Burke into giving the twins another chance, and Burke traveled to Norway for the World Championships to watch them play one last time. And Burke left the tournament thoroughly amazed and his eyes were set on picking the brothers from Sweden. The Canucks owned the third overall pick in the upcoming draft in 1999. But if Burke was going to draft the Sedins, it was going to have to be both brothers or nothing. And what a masterstroke it was, as the following series of events would elevate Burke's status in Canucks folklore and set the franchise up for success for the following couple of decades. There was no way Burke was going to leave it all by chance, so he knew he had to secure the first overall pick so that he could be in the driver's seat. Ultimately, three trades had to happen. First, the Canucks had to trade away Brian McCabe and a first round pick in next year's draft for Chicago's fourth overall pick in this year's draft. The Canucks now had the second and fourth pick, but that was far from enough. Now the second trade that had to happen. The Canucks' newly acquired fourth overall pick, along with a couple of third rounders, were dealt to the Tampa Bay Lightning for their first overall pick. But this proved tough because the Lightning were hesitant to part with their first overall pick but a dramatic, last-minute change of heart had given the Canucks the green light. The Canucks now owned the first and third overall picks, but still, they needed to be certain. So they went to the Atlanta Thrashers who owned the second overall pick. Burke had caught wind they wanted to pick Patrick Steffen, who was seen as the player with the highest ceiling in the draft. So Burke offered up his first overall pick for Atlanta's second overall pick if they promised not to pick a Sedin. Atlanta said yes, and Daniel and Henrik, who entered the draft fully expecting to be selected on different teams, were chosen second and third overall respectively by the Vancouver Canucks. In the following season, the Twins returned to Sweden to properly develop, and Henrik would lead Moto in scoring with 47 points in 50 games. He was just getting started. In the very next season in the year 2000, Henrik and Daniel made the move to North America as they started their rookie year with the Canucks. In their second game playing against the Tampa Bay Lightning, Henrik would set up Daniel for their first career points as they scored the game-tying goal with just over a minute left in the game. 
as the fans saw a glimpse of their chemistry and how dependable they were when it mattered most. Henrik would end the year with a modest 29 points, but the following several seasons would see an improvement year after year in offensive production. Starting out on the third line, Henrik would climb his way up the ranks and by the conclusion of the 05-06 season, with the help of brother Daniel and linemate Anson Carter, they would form the brother line as they propelled Henrik to a career-high 75 points, outproducing the West Coast Express, the team's supposed first line. The Sedins had firmly secured their names on the team's top line. They were strong on the puck, as their possession game on the cycle could give anyone motion sickness. They had the vision, the awareness, the ability to create plays and make a fool out of their opponents. They had shifts where they pinned the other team in their own zone completely with their puck control, and the only thing the others could do was pray they missed the net. But most crucially, their work ethic was absolutely astonishing. As rookies at the age of 19, they were already out and out professionals always perfecting their craft and never taking a day off. Their hard work allowed them to develop an overabundance of skill and endurance, as they would later be known for their dominating shifts that would last over two minutes, all in the offensive zone. And because of these characteristics, a 30-year-old Henrik would become the 13th captain in Vancouver Canucks history. As the Sedins continued to ascend into superstar status, the revolving door of line mates continued. But in 2009, they would find their perfect line mate in the most unlikeliest of places. Scoring that shorthanded goal to end an 8 game losing streak, agitator Alex Burroughs would get rewarded with his turn as the third Sedin. The Sedins, who were undoubtedly tough players, weren't ever going to be in your face, and they needed someone to scrap for loose pucks and win battles in front of the net. They needed someone quick enough to keep up with their cycle, someone smart enough to open himself up for the tap in. That player was Alex Burroughs, and they would capture lightning in a bottle, fighting instant chemistry. And Burroughs and brother Daniel became the catalyst that elevated Henrik's game as he would go on to end the season with 82 points that year. New line mate, newfound chemistry, and new career highs, but it was the following 2009-2010 season in which Henrik would have a season for the ages. Just four games into the year, the unthinkable happened. Brother Daniel would suffer an injury that would keep him sidelined for 18 games. Henrik, for the first time ever, had to play without his brother, and even the most optimistic fans had reservations on how he'd perform. Could one twin actually play without the other? Henrik proved that despite the absence of his brother, he was able to elevate his game, scoring a hat-trick in one game, and went on a 7-game goal streak leading up to Daniel's return. And the return of Daniel merely complimented Henrik, as Henrik ended the season with a career-high, franchise-high 112 points. Heading into that final regular season game against Calgary, Henrik was trailing Alex Ovechkin by points as the top scorer, but he exploded with 4 assists that game, capping it off with this insane deflection pass to brother Daniel for the between the legs finish, and Henrik took home the Art Ross Trophy as the player with the most points as well as the Hart Trophy as the league's most valuable player. But as anyone who's close enough to Henrik would know, he would trade all his personal glory for team success in a heartbeat, and he would head into the following 2010-2011 season determined to make that a reality. Henrik would help Daniel put up 104 points that year, which won him the Art Ross Trophy, as they became the first teammates to win the award since Yager and Lemieux had won it back to back, in 94 and 95. More importantly, Henrik would lead the team, capturing the President's Trophy as the best team in the regular season, and they would go on a deep, deep playoff run that came to a crashing end in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals against Boston. And heartbreakingly, that's as close as he would get to the Stanley Cup. Henrik's 22 points in 25 playoff games would lead the team, and even though he wasn't able to become a Stanley Cup champion, in the eyes of many Canucks fans, he had already become one. The following season would see Henrik lead the Canucks to a second straight President's Trophy, but they had lost their pedigree as they wouldn't make it out of the first round of the playoffs again during Henrik's tenure as captain. 
but despite the lack of postseason success near the end of their careers, Henrik and brother Daniel remained a force to be reckoned with in the regular season as they would both surpass the thousand point mark, signifying their durability and longevity. Henrik and Daniel Sedin would play their last game in 2018, and during their final home game, they produced a memorable night where they turned back the clock one final time. Henrik would provide two assists for Daniel as they won the game in overtime, bidding the Vancouver fanbase a proper farewell. Henrik's number 33 along with Daniel's number 22 would be retired by the team in 2020, deservedly claiming their rightful place alongside other team legends. In 2021, they would return to the Canucks as advisors to the GM as they hoped to finish what they started and one day bring the elusive Stanley Cup to Vancouver. This year, the Sedin Twins are eligible to be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame for the first time, and I'd almost mortgage my house and put a wager down that they'll both be named as inductees, Class of 2022. Henrik Sedin will be remembered for the way he conducted himself on and off the ice, from the moment he stepped on North American soil to the day he left and returned. He was loved by fans, appreciated by neutrals, and respected by rivals. In an era where speed was supposed to be the way to go, Henrik was really just an average skater who dominated the game with his puck control and monkey in the middle style of hockey. He had an average shot, yet he excelled with his passing, vision, awareness and constant movement. His cycle game required a lot of patience and discipline, and once he identified an opening, he was able to pinpoint that pass for the tap-in. All his linemates had to do was get open and have their stick on the ice and more often than not, Henrik would find them. Henrik's stamp on the game of hockey is truly remarkable, as he simply made things look much easier than it was. They popularized the drop pass used to easily enter the zone on the power play, and once they were in, they used their patented slap pass that's used by so many other teams nowadays. And what about that icing bank pass they used to perfection? Funny how they could pull that off when they were allegedly slow players. Contrary to popular belief, Henrik Sedin was tough as nails. Not in the sense that he's going to beat you up into the ground, but the fact that he made it in a league where he would receive rough treatment night in, night out, and his willingness to absorb, deflect, and carry on, it really goes to show how mentally and physically tough he was. And speaking of such physical treatment, being bounced around over an 82 game season is tough as it is, but to do it for 17 years without missing many games, that's extraordinary. What about his lack of a championship? Well, it's really unfortunate he couldn't secure the Stanley Cup in 2011, but as we know, hockey is a team sport, and surely he was one of the reasons the team got to the finals in the first place. And let's not forget he'd already become a champion, winning the Olympic gold medal with Team Sweden in the 2006 Olympic Games in Turin. Alright, earlier I asked which of these players is Henrik Sedin. The answer is this guy. I'm 100% sure 50% of the time. Henrik Sedin was truly a magical yet underrated player. Along with brother Daniel, he amazed and bamboozled those who were lucky enough to witness his brilliance. He was steps ahead of the rest and he did things that others simply couldn't do. As some of his ex linemates have stated, all they had to do was get open and have their stick on the ice, and Henrik was going to bank the puck off your stick and into the net. His knack for reading the play and knowing how plays were going to develop was almost like he could see into the future. Telekinesis is a claimed psychic ability allowing a person to influence a physical system without physical interaction. And while there is currently a lack of physical evidence that supports the existence of the phenomenon, upon witnessing Henrik Sedin in action, one might be hard pressed to argue against it. That's it for now, thanks for watching. If you're currently not subscribed, dude. And if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting the channel by liking, sharing, and commenting. See you soon.